Welcome to Orozco's Lectures. I am Jose Orozco, and these are my lectures. This lecture is a Calculus 1 lecture. I hope you enjoy it. This is chapter 3.4, so chapter 3, section 4, which is called the chain rule. All right, um, now the chain rule. It's essentially derivatives of composite functions. All right, so here we go. Let's start first with what the chain rule is. So this is the theorem. That's his theorem, all right? And this is the chain rule. All right, so this is what it says. If I have the derivative with respect to x of f composed with g of x, I'm just going to rewrite this as the derivative with respect to x of f of g of x. That's going to be f prime of g of x times g prime of x. All right. Um, another way to think about this is if I have, if I let u is, if I let u be equal to g of x, all right, then u prime would be equal to g prime of x. And then what we would have would be the derivative with respect to x of f of u would be f prime of u times u prime, all right? Another way to write this um, in, in a different notation would be to say, for example, if I have dy dx, that would be equal to dy du times du dx, all right? So these are all just different ways to think about the same exact thing, and that is the chain rule. A way to remember the chain rule is you do the derivative of the outside function, derivative of the outside function times the derivative of the inside function. Right. In here, the outside function is f. The inside function would be g. All right. So the derivative of the outside function times the derivative of the inside function. So let's do a proof for this. And in here, before I do this proof, first recall the alternative definition of a derivative and the alternative definition was that f prime of x was equal to the limit as h goes to zero of f of x not as h goes to zero sorry the derivative as x goes to c there we go of f of x minus f of c over x minus c all right so i'm going to be using that definition so all right so let's go ahead and find the derivative with respect to x of f of g of x, all right? So again, we have this composite function where g is the inside function. Well, using this definition, what we get is the limit as x goes to c of f of g of x plus h minus f of g of c all of this over x minus c all right so that's what we get in that part but now now let's um <clears throat> let's see what we can do here to to rewrite this all right now there's always two things that we can do to any math problem irrelevant of what the math problem is and those two things were multiply by one and add zero in this case, I'm going to multiply it by 1, and my 1 is going to be 
g of x minus g of c over g of x minus g of c. Notice that that fraction is just equal to 1. So we're just multiplying by 1 and thus we're not changing anything. Now, let's, um, let's play around with this. What we can do here is we can rearrange this. We can say now that we have um, the limit as x goes to c of, I'm just going to rearrange these to this product of fractions. All right, so essentially this is what I'm going to be doing. If I have a over b times c over d, this is the same thing as saying a over d times c over b. All right, that's the property that I'm going to be using right now. So I'm going to rewrite this now as f of g of x plus h minus f of g of c all of this over g of x minus g of c times g of x minus g of c over x minus c so essentially these two were swapped in places all right so the next thing that i'm going to do here now this is just a technicality if x is going to c that tells me that g of x is going to g of c all right assuming that g is a continuous um, differentiable function so at this point what am i going to rewrite this as all right i have this limit over here so i'm going to rewrite this as a product of two limits but i'm going to re rewrite the first one i'm going to say the limit as g of x approaches g of c of f of g of x plus h minus f of g of c all of this over g of x minus g of c times the limit as x approaches c of g of x minus g of c over x minus c and again this right here this change for that limit comes from this part over here and it is just a technicality so that we can actually have the exact form that we need here for the derivative all right because in here this first bracket now that by definition would be f prime of g of x and then the second bracket here by definition would be just g prime of x all right and again that's using this definition that we have in blue up there all right so this is the proof of the chain rule and again essentially this comes down to the idea of the derivative of the outside function times the derivative of the inside function all right um so this was using the alternative definition to prove it it can technically be done with um without that but now with, with just the regular definition of the derivative i mean but now let's um, let's do some examples, all right? So in here, let's say for example that I have f of x being equal to one over x plus one, all right? So so in here, let's think about what this is really saying. If I let, for example, if I let u be equal to x plus one, then at that point, what I really get is that this function can be rewritten as f of u would be 1 over u, all right? Um, similarly, well, uh, another part that we can think about here is that if u is equal to x plus 1, then u prime is equal to just 1, all right? So, so let's see what we can do here. Um, if I rewrite it with this format, right? Well, what I have here is that f of u can, well, first of all, can be written as u to the negative 1. So let's see what we have here. So in here, I'm rewriting f of x, um, sorry, to, to find f prime of x, well, first I rewrite it as f of u is equal to 1 over u, right, which was u to the negative 1. Well, I just, that was redundant. But as far as the derivative, what well, is going to be f prime of u, and then by the chain rule times u prime. So let's figure out what f prime of u is. Well, if f of u is u to the negative one, 
then f prime of u would be negative u to the negative 2, right? Bring the exponent down, subtract 1 from the exponent. So this would be f prime of, so hold on, let's rewrite this as the derivative. Let's shift this over. I can say here the derivative with respect to x of f of u would be f prime of u times u prime. So our f prime of u was negative u to the negative 2 times u prime. Our u prime was equal to just 1 in this case. But the problem was not about u. We need to put things back into terms of x. So we can think about this as negative x plus 1 to the negative 2, which is just written as negative 1 over x plus 1 squared. All right. Now, that that was a lot of uh, extra notation all right and um, we, we don't normally do this problem like this so let me show you how we really normally do this kind of problem if i'm finding a derivative all right so let's look at this alternative way or the the regular way so f of x is one over x plus one right this is just x plus one to the negative one so what i'm going to do here is f from of x well, I need to take the derivative of the outside function first. In here, if we ignore this inside stuff, well, the outside function is just something to the negative one, right? Something to the negative one. The derivative of something to the negative one would be, well, negative one times that something to the negative two. Now, what was that something? That something was x plus one. But then by the chain rule, I need to multiply it by the derivative of the inside. And here, this is the inside, x plus 1. The derivative of x plus 1 is just 1. So in here, I could just rewrite this as negative 1 over x plus 1 quantity squared. All right. So that's how we really normally do something like this. Again, this up here was just a lot of extra notation. Um, and it, and it helps to figure out what the inside function is, right, um, in order to do these. So let's look at another one. Um, so if I had something like f of x is equal to cosine of 3x squared plus 2x minus 8, all right? So let's see what the inside function is here. The inside function is all of that. So in there, u prime would be 6x plus 2, right? We got to keep that in mind. So what we need to do here, well, f prime of x, well, is going to be the derivative of the outside function. And again, the outside function here, well, let's ignore this inside stuff. The outside function is just cosine, right? So the derivative, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we have negative sine, of 3x squared plus 2x minus 8. And now we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside, we already calculated it to be 6x plus 2. All right, so, so that would be the derivative. And again, we look at this as the derivative of the outside function, which in this case is just cosine, and then times the derivative of the inside function. Let's say that I have f of x being equal to 5x squared plus sine of x minus 7 to the 1 half, all right? And in here, essentially what we're looking at this function is we have something, something to the 1 half, right? So that's what makes the outside function, something to the 1 half. So what's the derivative of something to the 1 half? Well, it's going to be 1 half of that thing to the negative one half, right? Subtract so the exponent by one. And here is just that thing. Well, what was that thing? 5x squared plus sine x minus 7. And then that times the derivative of the inside. And here, this entire thing is the inside. So the derivative of that will be 10x plus cosine x. This minus 7 goes away when we take the derivative, right? So, I mean, 
we can rewrite this and say this is just 10x plus cosine x over 2 times 5x squared plus sine x minus 7 to the 1 half. All right. So, so but I mean, that, that last step is just really rewriting. Okay. But again, the idea here is that we're taking the derivative of something raised to a power. All right. Um, so that's D. Uh, D. And here we go. So this is what D says. Let's say that we have f of x being equal to cotangent squared of x. All right. Cotangent squared of x. Now let's think about what this is really saying. This is really saying this is something. So this is the squared of cotangent x, right? And and essentially here, where we where we look at the outside function, well, the outside function is just something squared, right? Something squared. <clears throat> so let's take the derivative. Well, the derivative of something squared is two times that thing raised to the first power, right? And what was that thing? That thing was cotangent of x. But then times, but well, by the chain rule, we had to multiply times the derivative of the inside function. And here the inside function is just cotangent. So the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared of x. So we can really write this if we wanted to as negative 2 cosecant squared of x times cotangent of x. All right. And again, all we're really doing here is looking at it as the derivative of the outside function times the derivative of the inside function. All right, so that's D. <clears throat> e. Um, let's let's look at this with the with, with some other notation. Let's say that we have y is equal to two x to the second plus seven, and that to the fourth. And let's do plus seven um, secant of x, and that to the fourth. There we go. Way better. All right. So now in here. What we want to look at here is this is really saying something to the fourth power, right? This is our u. Now, what I really want to look at here is that I want to use this format dy dx is equal to dy du times du dx. All right? So, in here, what we really can write y hat, uh, excuse me, how we can really write y is we can say this is y is equal to u to the fourth. All right, and then here would be u would be equal to 2x squared plus 7 secant of x. So that, um, well, let's figure out what these things give us. Well, then dy dx would be from here for u to the third. And then du dx, well, from here it would be 4x plus 7 secant x tan x, right? So so now, what we can do now here is, let's rewrite this. We know that dy dx is dy du times du dx. So let's see what we get. So dy dx is dy du, oh, look at this. This is bad notation. That should have said dy du, all right? That should have said a u there. But let's, let's make it the same color. Um, I think it was this. Yeah, that's close enough. So we have dy du is equal to that stuff. So now dy dx is going to be dy du, right? dy du, which is 4u cubed, times du dx, which is 4x plus 7 secant x tan x, right? But now the next thing here is, well, this problem wasn't about u. Never leave your problem in terms of u. So we have four times, what was u? This entire thing. 2x squared plus 7 secant of x. And then that to the third times 4x plus 7 secant x tan x. All right. So that would be dy dx. And again, this is just a slightly different notation to talk about the same exact thing. All right. Um, so that's E, F. 
this is another one with this attack notation. So let's say that I have y is equal to um let's 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 change this up a little bit. Let's say that we have um five e to the x minus four x squared and then this to the third. Alright. So let's see what um what we end up with here. So in here, um, this inside part, that's my u, right? So what I can say here is really that y is equal to u to the third. And now u was 5e to the x minus 4x squared. Now, let's recall what we're trying to do here. I'm trying to use this, dy dx is equal to dy du times du dx all right so let's figure out what dy du is so from here dy du would be 3u squared all right cool now let's figure out what du dx is well i have 5 e to the x so this becomes the derivative of 5 e to the x is just 5 e to the x and then this part becomes just negative 8 x so now what we can say now is that dy dx is well dy du which was 3u squared times du dx which was 5e to the x minus 8x but in here we still have a u and we know the problem was not about u so what we do here is we write this as 3 times 5e to the x minus 4x squared to the third times 5e to the x minus 8x. All right. So that's what we get um, there. And again, I'm just uh, rewriting this using that notation, mainly because at some point that will be a very useful notation to work with. All right. But again, the idea is still the same of the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. All right. G. Let's say that I have f of x being equal to, let's do um, 3, um, well, we already used secant, so let's do 3 cos secant, nah, let's do cotangent, cool, 3 cotangent of x um, minus 4, and then this to the two-thirds all right and this is the four x here there we go way better so in here <clears throat> oh, and i was trying to use the other notation so i don't want to use f of x i want to use y there we go so in here we can rewrite all of this letting that equal to u right so we can rewrite y as y is equal to u to the th two-thirds and in here u being equal to three cotangent x minus 4x so then dy du would be well two-thirds u to the negative one-third and then du dx would be well the de derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared the, de the derivative of 4x is just 4 all right so in here what does that give us now well that gives us that dy dx would be equal to, I'm going to rewrite this as 2 over 3u to the one third times negative 3 cosecant squared of x minus 4. All right. Um, but then again, the problem was not about u. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rewrite this as negative 2 times. 3 cosecant squared of x plus 4 over 3 times instead of u, well u was this thing, 3 cotangent of x minus 4x, and that's to the one third, all right? So let's continue, all right? So that was g. h. Let's say that I have um, 
s of t being equal to negative 9 over 4t minus 5 squared. All right. So let's see what we get here. Um, I'm going to change this. I'm going to say 4t squared. There we go. So this is going to be just negative 9 times 4t squared minus 5 to the negative second. All right, so let's figure out what the derivative would be. So s prime of t here would be, well, we still have this negative 9 out here. Bring that negative 2 to the front, right, because in here, let's back up a bit. I'm looking at this as something raised to the second power, right? Something raised to the second power. So that's the outside function. Negative 9 times something raised to this negative second power. So what I get now here is, well, the derivative of that outside function would be negative 2 times this thing to the negative 3, right? Bring the negative 2 down, subtract the exponent by 1, and that thing was 4t squared minus 5, and then times the derivative of the inside. In here, the inside is 8. Well, the derivative of the inside, right? This is the inside. The derivative of that is just 8t. So now, what do we have? Well, we have negative times a negative is a positive. So I have 18 times 8t over 4t squared minus 5 to the third, right? So I brought down the negative exponent to the bottom, and I combined these two, and now 18 times 8. Well, 8 times 8 is 64, carry the 6, and 8 times 1 is 8 plus the 6 that we were carrying is 14. So I have 144t over 4t squared minus 5. To the third all right and again the, the the general principle is the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside so next one let's say i have f of x being equal to let's do x cubed plus four the second power and we're going to kick it up a notch times 1 minus x squared to the 1 half power all right so so let's see what we what we end up with here all right but 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 in in here let's let's really think about what's happening here i've got here overall the product of two functions so i can say this is u and this is v so what we have there is a product of two functions. So we need to use a product rule, right? And as you recall, the product rule was, well, in terms of u and v, so the derivative with respect to x of u times v, it would be u prime v plus v prime u, all right? So let's see what we get here. Well, let's figure out what u prime is. Well, let's rewrite this. If u is equal to x cubed plus 4 squared, then u prime would be well in here let's look at that the derivative of the outside the outside is something squared so the derivative of that is two times x cubed plus four times by the chain rule the derivative of the inside and the derivative of the inside would be three x squared now let's look at v v was one minus x squared to the one half all right so v prime well and here, overall, I've got something raised to the one-half power. So the derivative would be one-half times that something to the negative one-half. And that something was one minus x squared. But then by the chain rule, we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. The, in the derivative of the inside here being negative 2x. All right. Um, so let's, let's consolidate. Let's, let's rewrite this a little bit. Um, well, actually, I'm just going to leave it like that. All right for now. So let's look at what f prime of x would be. So f prime of x would be, well, using the the product rule, well, it's u prime v, so 2 times x cubed plus 4 times 3x squared, so that's u prime v, uh, well, me, that's just u prime, times v, which is 1 minus x squared to the 1 half, plus v prime, 1 half times 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half 
times negative 2x to p prime times u and our u was x cubed plus 4 to the second power all right um now hopefully at this point if um if you took pre-calculus um well you should recall from pre-calculus uh problems that look similar to this right where we have all this messy algebra all right um what we're gonna do here is we're gonna factor some stuff out all right so let's see what um what we have in common here well let's see an x cubed plus four and an x cubed plus four what else do i see i see a one minus x squared and a one minus x squared what else do i see um i see here x and i see here x all right and that's pretty much all I see because what we can do also here is we can reduce a little bit, all right? And I see here that this two reduces with this two, right? So in here I just have uh, a negative x in in that piece right there, all right? So perhaps I'll write it as this. So in here, this entire thing becomes just negative x, all right? <clears throat> so now. Let's see what we can factor out, and I'll I'll continue to to color coordinate it. All right, so we're gonna take out the x cubed plus four. Now, to decide what power we should take out, well, let's look at the powers. We always take out the smallest of those two powers of the exponents, right? So I'm gonna take it out to the first power. All right, what else can I take out? Let's see. I was gonna take out an x, right? Because there's an x there. So I'm going to take it an x. Um, and again, just 1 because in here, between 1 and 2, 1 is the smallest of the 2. And I'm also going to take out a 1 minus x squared. But I'm going to take it out to the smaller of these two. Well, the smaller between 1 half and negative 1 half is negative 1 half. Now let's see what we're left with. Well, this 2 I didn't take out, so that's still there. This x cubed plus 4, I took that out, so that's not there. This 3x squared, I took out an x out of that, so I'm still left with a 3x. This 1 minus x squared to the 1 half, well, I took out a negative 1 half. So I have 1 half, and I took out a negative 1 half. That's just 1, right? 1 half minus negative 1 half is just 1. So I end up here with this 1 minus x squared. To the one power but we don't really write that all right um what else do we have here this plus um this one though doesn't really do anything but this one minus x squared to the negative one half that's what i took out so that's no longer there this negative x well i took out an x out of that so i'm left with a negative one and from here from this x cubed plus four to the second well i took out x cubed plus four to the first so i'm still left with and x cubed plus 4. So, what can we do here? Well, let's uh, let's rewrite this even more, or even further. So, what we can do is, um, well, this x cubed plus 4 and this x are still there. I'm going to put this to the bottom, 1 minus x squared to the positive 1 half. And let's uh, simplify this bracket. In here, this is really just 6x. So if I distribute that into here and here, well, what I end up with is 6x minus 6x to the third. This negative distributed all the way around, I end up with negative x cubed minus 4, right? Um, so, so now simplifying that inside that bracket, so let's, uh, let's continue to write this. So x cubed plus 4 times x times, well, negative 6x cubed minus x cubed, that's negative 7x cubed. And then we still have here a 6x and a negative 4. All right, and this is all over 1 minus x squared to the 1 half. All right. Um, so that's what we end up there. But, but notice that it, it looked much simpler originally, right? It's just the product of two functions. So in here, here um, 
And here what I want you to notice is that we use not only the product rule, but also the chain rule, all right? We use the product rule and the chain rule within the same problem. That is a very common thing to happen, all right? Essentially what this tells us is the chain rule can apply a lot of times. In fact, the chain rule always applies in general, all right? The chain rule always applies. So don't ever forget the chain rule. Um, as far as the derivatives go, the chain rule is probably, well, actually, let me rephrase that. The chain rule is definitely the most important rule, all right? It is, it's something that's always, that always needs to be applied. So let's, uh, let's continue. So that was I. Let's do another example. Um, J. So... Let's say here that we have something like f of x is equal to x over, and we'll start simple with this one, x to the fourth plus four to the one half. Let's change that for seven. Cool, way better. All right, so in here, um, well, what do we really have here? And here I have u, over v right where u is equal to x and v is equal to x to the fourth plus seven to the one half uh, let me let me move this a little bit down here um i wanted to move that because i wanted to remind you of what rule i'm going to be using and in here we're doing the derivative with respect to x of u over v so the derivative of a quotient, well, the quotient rule, u prime v minus v prime u all over v squared, right? The derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top all over the bottom squared. So in here, well, what's u prime? u prime is just one. What's v prime? v prime is one half times x to the fourth plus seven to the negative one half times four x cubed all right and notice that that's what we get because in here originally i have something to the one half right so we're taking the derivative of something to the one half and the derivative of something to the one half is one half times that something to the negative one half and then by the chain rule times the derivative of the inside all right so now now we can actually go ahead and apply the quotient rule here so f prime of x would be well the derivative of the top, which we said what's u prime, well it's just one, times the bottom, x to the fourth plus seven to the one half, minus the derivative of the bottom, which is one half times x to the fourth plus seven to the negative one half times four x cubed, and then that times the top, which was just x. All of this over the bottom which is x to the fourth plus seven to the one half over the bottom squared. All right. Um, so, so let's see what we get now. Um, what can we, what can we factor out and or reduce? Well, in here, I see that this two makes this four into a two, right? Those two reduce there. Um, what else do I see? I see that x to the fourth plus seven appears in both of these pieces. So what I can do there is I can factor that out. So let's factor that out. So if I factor out an x to the fourth plus seven, but to which power? Between one half and negative one half? Well, negative one half is the smaller of the two. So that's what we need to factor out. So I have x to the fourth plus seven to the negative one half power. Um, and that's the only thing I can factor out, right? So what am I left with? Well, in this first piece, I'm left with, well, I started with one half. I took out a negative one half. One half minus one, well, excuse me, one half minus negative one half is one. So I have x to the fourth plus seven to the one power. But we don't normally write the one power. Minus, this is what I took out, right? x plus four to the, excuse me, x plus four plus, what? Well, I said that wrong. x to the fourth plus seven to the negative one half. There we go. English is difficult sometimes. So 
So that's what we have. So x to the fourth plus seven to the negative one half. I factor that out here. So that's no longer there. I'm still left with well two x cubed times x. That's two x to the fourth. And all of this over the bottom square. So this to the one half and then squared. Well, that's just x to the fourth plus seven, right? All right. Now let's see what we have here. I see I have an x to the fourth plus seven in both of these pieces. Let's let's consider this scenario. If I have, um, I'll do it in a different color over here. If I have um, a to the one half over a, excuse me, a to the negative one half over a, well, this becomes one over a times a to the one half, and then by rules of exponents, there's one over a to the three half, right? That's what's going on around in this piece, right? So that's exactly what's happening there. So what I can do now is, well, where a is just this thing, right? X plus x to the fourth plus seven. So I'm going to think of this as x to the fourth plus seven on the bottom to the three halves, and that's from this idea. On top, x to the fourth minus two x squared, that's negative x to the fourth. So I end up with negative x to the fourth plus seven over x to the fourth plus seven to the three halves. Right, and then I mean we can't really do anything else there. All right, so that would be our final answer. All right, um, let's do another one. So that was J. Okay. So <clears throat> let's say that I have f of x being equal to three x squared minus two to the one six over 2x plus 3 to the 3 halves, all right? So in here, the top is our u, the bottom is our v, right? So in here I have, well, let's go ahead and do this without writing that. All right, let's try to keep, let's try to keep track of it in our heads. So we have, the derivative of the top, right, I need to do a quotient rule here, right? A quotient rule because I have a fraction. But within the quotient rule, I need to keep in mind that I might need to use the chain rule. Because the chain rule applies always, all right? Always. So, on the top there, <clears throat> well, what, what can we do there? We need to do the quotient rule, so the derivative of the top, which is one half, well, not one half, one sixth times 3x squared minus 2 to the negative 5, 6, right? I just reduced, I just subtracted 1, 6 minus 1, times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside here is 6x, right? So that's, that's just the derivative of the top, times the bottom, 2x plus 3 to the 3 halves, minus the derivative of the bottom, which is 3 halves times 2x plus 3 to the 1 half, and then by the chain rule, times 2. So that's the derivative of the bottom times the top, which is 3x squared minus 2 to the um, 1 6. All of this over the bottom, 2x plus 3 to the 3 halves, all of this over the bottom squared. All right? And again, this should look uh, familiar, right? Like these kinds of problems um, from from precalc or or even or even from um, from the re from chapter one, right? There was a couple of problems where you needed to to um, simplify these kinds of expressions. And at this point, it just becomes algebra, right? So let's see what we can do here. I see that this six and this six cancel each other out. I see that this two and this two cancel each other out. What else do I see? I see that I've got 3x squared minus 2 and 3x squared minus 2. What else do I see? I see that we have 2x plus 3 and 2x plus 3. So we're going to be able to factor some of these things out. All right, so let's uh, let's see what we can, uh, we can factor out. And I'll continue to color coordinate this. So what I have here is um, 3x squared minus 2. And then between negative 5, 6 and positive 1, 6, 
the smaller of the two is negative 5, 6. What else do we, will we do to take out? That 2x minus 3. So 2x minus 3. Right? And there, well, the two exponents that I have, there are 3 halves and 1 half. The smaller of those two is 1 half. All right? And that's everything that we're going to be able to do to factor out. So now let's see what we're left with. We're left with, well, 3x squared minus 2 to the negative 5, 6. That's what I took out, right? So that's no longer there. This x is still there. I had 2x plus 3 to the 3 halves, but I took out 1 half, so I'm left with 2x plus 3 to the, well, 3 halves minus 1 half is just 2 halves, which is just 1. So that's it. So that minus 3 times this 2x plus 3. Again, I took it out to the power of 1 half, which is this entire thing. So, so we don't have to worry about that. But now this 3x squared minus 2. I had 1 sixth and I took out negative 5 sixth. 1 sixth and I took out negative 5 sixth. That's just 1, right? Because it's 1 sixth plus 5 sixth. So that's just 1. So that's why there this becomes to the power of 1 but we don't normally write the exponents like that so down here well what do i end up with 3 halves times 2 is 3 so i just have 2x plus 3 to the third all right um and i don't know where i got this minus here that should have been plus that should have been plus there we go all right now everything's good with the world now that we fixed that. Good job. Good job, everybody. Now, let's see what we can do now. Um, in here, I see I have this negative exponent. Um, that can be moved to the bottom, right? So what I have here is 3x squared minus 2 to the 5, 6. Now, over here, let's look at this, all right? I have to the 1 half on top and to the third on bottom. So if I have a to the one half on top and a to the third on bottom, well the rule here would be a to the one half minus three, right? Now three is just six halves. So what I end up with here is a to the negative five halves. In other words, one over a to the five halves. All right. And I'll just put that on the side as a different color because it's side work all right but now wh wh why did i care about that well because that's exactly what's going on there right a to the one half over a to the third so that's how that simplifies so <clears throat> i'm going to get here now um a 2x plus 3 to the five halves okay now in this in these brackets let's expand that i'm going to distribute that too so I have 2x squared plus 3. I meant to distribute that x. So I have 2x squared plus 3x. And now I'm going to distribute that negative 3. So I end up with um, negative 9x squared plus 6. Combining like terms now, well, 2x minus 9x is negative 7x squared. And then plus 3x plus 6 over this stuff down here. 3x squared minus 2 to the 5, 6 times 2x plus 3 to the 5 halves, right? Um, so that's, that's, so again, this, this is an example of the quotient rule um, that has the chain rule embedded within it, all right? And again, the chain rule, the chain rule comes up a lot, all right? It is, it is probably the most, imp it is definitely the most important rule. Let's put it that way. It is definitely the most important rule because it applies always. Now, um, let's uh, listen to some other examples. So that was K, right? Uh, yeah, K. So let's look at L. All right. Um, so let's say that I have f of x being equal to sine of 5x to the second. All right. Normally, we would actually, let me, let me say, 
let me rewrite this. Normally we would, we would actually have written this as sine squared of 5x. All right. But again, this can be written as sine of 5x to the second. All right. Now, what, what I want you to realize here is that we have a function inside a function inside a function. What do I mean? Well, let's look at what the outermost function is. The outermost thing here is something squared, right? That's the outermost thing. And then what? Well, the inside to that is sine of something, right? Sine of something. And then the inside to that is just 5x, right? Now, in here, what we want to keep in track, what we want to keep in mind here is we need to keep track of what these insights are, all right? Because what's going to happen here is, well, this isn't a, you're really going to see why this is called the chain rule in a second, all right? Um, so let's see what we have here. So f prime of x would be, again, the derivative of the outside function. Well, outside is something squared. So that's going to be 2 times that thing. To the first power and what was that thing that thing was sine of 5x times the derivative of the inside the inside function now it was sine right so the derivative of sine is cosine of that thing and then times the derivative of the inside of that so the derivative of 5x is 5 so what you see here is that well when we were taking these uh this derivative using the chain rule it created a chain reaction, all right? That's really why it's called the chain rule, because it creates a chain reaction um, and taking the derivatives. I mean, as far as this one's concerned, we can rewrite this now as 10 times sine of 5x cosine of 5x, all right? Um, but that would be the final answer. Uh, all right, so that is L. M. Let's say that I had um, y is equal to e to the 7x squared plus 2. All right. So let's see what we what we can do here. Well, first, I'm gonna say, well, this part up here, this exponent, that's the that's the u. So let's write this as y is equal to e to the u, where u is 7x squared plus 2. Right, so now in here, dy du would just be e to the u, but du dx would be 14x. And by the way, what we're doing here is I'm trying to use this version that dy dx is dy du times du dx. Right, um, so at this point, well, what do we get? We get dy dx. So dy du, that was just e to the u, times du dx, that was just 14x. But the problem was not about u, right? And that's a u, it kind of looks like a 4. Let's rewrite that. u, there we go, way better. And now, our u was 7x squared plus 2. So in here, I can rewrite this now as 14x times e to the 7x squared plus 2. All right, so it's the derivative of the outside function, which was e to the something, times the derivative of the inside function, which was 7x squared plus 2. All right. Um, next one. So that's m. n. Let's say that I have um, f of x being equal to... tangent of 9x uh, the cotangent to the third of 9x all right so uh, let's, let's make this 9x squared 9x squared all right so in here let's look at this as cotangent of 9x squared to the third power and in here we have 
the outermost function is something to the third, right? So what we can say here now is that f prime of x is going to be 3 times that something squared. And what was that thing? Cotangent of 9x squared times the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared of that thing. Notice that I'm writing an uh, I'm still writing this inside in the same exact way, all right? Um, it's not just, so the derivative of cotangent, normally we say that it's just negative cosecant squared, but it's not just cotangent, right? It's cotangent of 9x squared. So it's negative cosecant squared of 9x squared. But then times the derivative of the inside. At that point, the inside was 9x squared. So we need to multiply it times 18x. So in here, we can really rewrite this as negative 18x times cotangent squared of 9x squared times cosecant squared of 9x squared. All right. Um, so that would be the final answer there. All right, now let's talk about a derivative that we haven't spoken about. All right, so the derivative of the natural log function. All right, so the derivative with respect to x of ln of x is 1 over x, all right? And that's uh, in general true as long as x is greater than 0. Um, x being greater than 0, that's just because that's the domain of ln of x, right? Um, in terms of u, though, if I had the derivative respect to x of ln of u, well, that would be 1 over u times u prime. And that's by the chain rule, right? And again, in here, well, u would have to be greater than zero. But this is just the chain rule version of the same derivative, right? Um, so now, I'm not going to do a proof of this yet, only because uh, there's still something that we need to talk about in, uh, in the next section, 3.5. All right, I will prove this in 3.5, why, why this is actually the derivative. But for now, you should just believe me all right it's 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 true all right so now that was n so oh let's do some examples with this so if i have the derivative with respect to x of ln of 7x all right well in here this is going to be well the derivative of the outside the outside is ln of something right ln of something ln of something. So the derivative of the outside there is going to be um, 1 over that thing times the derivative of the inside, which is just 7. So in here I just end up with 1 over x. All right. Um, perhaps I should do, uh, I guess I can do this in terms of u, right? If I said y is equal to ln of 7x and I let u be equal to 7x so that I can use this version of the chain rule dy dx is dy du times du dx well at that point y would be equal to ln of u right um we just had that u is equal to 7x so what we get now is that dy du would be 1 over u in here du dx would be just 7 right giving me now that um, dy dx was well dy du 1 over u times dy dx which is just 7 but u u was 7x right and we know not to leave our problems in terms of u because the problem it's not about u. So I have 1 over 7x times 7, which gives me just 1 over x. All right. So that's example O. And again, the second way over here um, on the bottom is just so you can see it with this notation and use. All right. So that was O.
p. So let's say that I have um, f of x being equal to ln of 3x squared plus 4. All right. So well, what's a, well, what are we going to get? Well, f prime of x. In here, again, chain rule. So we have the derivative of the outside. The outside function is ln of something. <clears throat> so the derivative of ln of something is 1 over that thing. 1 over 3x squared plus 4. But then by the chain rule times the derivative of the inside function. And, the der and here this is the inside function. 3x squared plus 4. So the derivative of that is just 6x. So I can rewrite this as 6x over 3x squared plus 4. All right. Next one. So that was P. Q. Let's say that I had f of x being equal to um, x to the third times ln of x squared plus 1. All right. So in here, in here, let's notice something. In here, I've got the product of two functions, right? Where I might need to use the chain rule. In fact, I will need to use the chain rule. But the idea here is we got the product of two functions, so I have to use the product rule. And I'm not going to write down the product rule this time. Let's see if we can just do it by memory. So the product rule is the derivative of the first, the x squared, times the second, ln of x squared plus 1, plus the derivative of the second, the derivative of the second function. So that's going to be 1 over x squared plus 1 times 2x. And that times 2x is from the chain rule, right? So in here, I'm looking at this as ln of something. And the derivative of ln of something is 1 over that thing. But then by the chain rule times the derivative of the inside. So that's the derivative of the second times the first. So x cubed. Um, at this point, um, I'm just going to rewrite this as 3x squared times ln of x squared plus 1 plus 2x to the fourth over x squared plus 1. And we'll just leave it as that. All right. Um, all right. So that was q. R. Let's say that I have f of x being equal to um, ln of e to the 3x plus 4, um, 4x squared. And all of this raised to the 7th power. All right. So again, this is the chain rule. So we have, we have to look at the outermost thing here. The outermost thing here is something raised to the seventh power so let's see the derivative f prime of x something raised to the seventh power all right so that's going to be seven times that thing raised to the sixth power and that thing was ln of e to the 3x plus 4x squared all right now that was the outermost but we need to multiply times the derivative of the inside and the inside here is ln so we need to multiply it by, well, so we have ln of something, right? ln of something. The derivative of ln of something is 1 over that thing. 1 over that thing, which was e to the 3x plus 4x squared. And then that times the derivative of the inside function, right? And in here, at this point, the inside function was um, this thing e to the 3x plus 4x squared. So the derivative of that would be 3e to the 3x times, excuse me, that times plus 8x, all right? And in here, notice that I took this derivative of e to the 3x and I wrote it as 3e to the 3x. That's because the derivative here, the outermost function, outermost function is e to the something. So the derivative of e to the something is e to that thing. And then times the derivative of the inside. The inside being 3x, so the derivative is just 3. All right. Um, now in this one, there's not really anything that we that we can do to make this any prettier. So I'm just going to leave it as as written. All right. Um. All right. So that was R. 
S. Let's say that I have um, f of x being equal to ln of x squared times x squared plus 7 to the third. All of this over the square root of 2x to the fourth minus 9. All right. Now, let, let, let's see what we have here. Let's, let's think about this. We have ln of something right so the derivative is going to be one over that thing okay and then we need to apply the chain rule and take the derivative of the inside but on the inside i see that i've got a fraction right um so that means i need to use the quotient rule so but but but, but, need, but, but to use the quotient rule i'm gonna have to take the derivative of the top and to find the derivative of the top here well i would need to use a product rule because i have product but at that point, I'm also going to need to find the derivative of this piece over here, which is going to require the chain rule. And also, when I take the derivative of the bottom, it's going to require the chain rule. Ooh, that's a lot. That's a lot. I don't want to do that. And I highly recommend that you don't do this either. All right? This, this, um, this problem, you should not be taking the derivative as written. Instead, what can we do? Well, what, what we can do here is we can rewrite, we can rewrite this function using rules of logs, all right? If you, if you use the rules of logs here, what we can do is this can be rewritten as 2 ln of x plus 3 ln of x squared plus 7 minus 1 half ln of 2x to the fourth minus 9. Now that is way more manageable, all right? That's way more manageable. Let's see what we get for our derivative there, all right? So since that's f of x, what's f prime of x? Well, in here in this first part, pretty straightforward. Well, let's do it this way. It's gonna be two times the derivative of ln of x is just one over x, plus three times the derivative of this thing. Well. It's ln of something, so it's going to be 1 over that thing times the derivative of the inside, which was, which is 2x, minus 1 half times ln of something, so it's, the derivative is 1 over that thing, 2x to the fourth minus 9, times the derivative of the inside, which is 8x to the third. All right. Um, so... As my final answer here, I can rewrite this as just 2 over x plus 6x over x squared plus 7 minus 4x cubed over 2x to the fourth minus 9. And by the way, that, that, that 4, where did that come from? This 2 and this 8 reduce, just being 4, right? And um, look, how, look how much easier that was. Right when we first when I first uh, mentioned how to do this, well I said there was a quotient rule and then there was a chain rule and then there was a product rule and there was more chain rule. Don't do that. All right, don't do that. Look 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 for ways to rewrite the function, especially when we have ln functions. All right, or just log functions. Um, all right. So now, so that was um, s. Uh, all right. Before I do the, the next example, let's um, let's do some deriv some other derivatives. So theorem. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! I don't want to write in blue. Let's change that color. Theorem. So not so. No, let's do this. Derivatives of exponentials. And logarithmics and logs, not base e. So we want to do the derivative of exponentials with other bases, all right? As well as the derivatives of logarithmics with other bases. So the derivative with respect to x of a to the x is a to the x times ln of a. All right, a to the x times ln of a. The chain rule version of this would be the derivative with respect to x of a to the u would be a to the u times ln of a times u prime. All right. 
Um, now, the derivative with respect to x of log base a of x. Well, that's going to be 1 over x times ln of a. All right? 1 over x times ln of a. The general version of this would be, well, the derivative with respect to x of log base a of u. That would be 1 over u times ln of a times u prime. All right. Um, so let's do some examples with these. <clears throat> um, and that wouldn't be too many. So what was I at? That was s? Yeah. So t. So t here we've got, let's do y equals um, 8 to the x. So then, well, that's in this format, right? So that means that dy dx would be a to the x times ln of 8. Let's use that same definition to, so t u. Let's use that same definition for e to the x. Well, what would dy dx be by this definition? Well, it would be e to the x times ln of e. But then we know that ln of e, ln of e is just 1, so I just end up with e to the x. So this is consistent, right? It's consistent with our rules for the derivative of e to the x. So that was u. b. Let's say that I have um, f of x being equal to 3 to the 5x. All right? It's going to be 2 to the 5x squared plus sine of x. All right, there we go. Way more exciting. So what would this give us? Well, f prime of x would be 3 to the 5x squared plus sine x times ln of 3, right? That's just the derivative of the outside function, times the derivative of the inside function, and the inside function here being this entire exponent. So the derivative of that would be 10x plus cosine x. Right. So that's V. W. Let's say that I have f of x being um, log base 7 of, um, let's do, uh, let's do something simple. Let's just do sine of x. Sine of x. Log base 7 of sine of x. Right. Um, well, what, what would we get here? In here, f prime of x would be, well, by definition, this would be 1 over sine of x, right? So I'm using this definition right here, right? 1 over sine of x times ln of 7 times the root of the inside. The root of sine is cosine. Simplifying this, well, I see I have cosine on top of sine, so that's just cotangent. So I'm just going to write this as cotangent x over ln of 7. All right? Um, next one. So that was w. Let's say that I had something like, um, well, let's, let's really come up with a complex looking one y is equal to 5 to the log base 2 of x cubed plus 4 secant of x. All right? So what will we do here? Well, let's let's see what we get. Actually, let me let me change that a little bit. Secant of 3x Right. All right. So let's see what we get. So then dy dx. Well, in here overall, what do I really have here? I have five to some power. Right. Five to some power. The derivative of five to some power is five to that power. A lot of writing here. So five to that power times ln of 5. 
but then I have to multiply it by the derivative of the inside. And here the inside is this log thing. So let's see what we get. Well, the derivative of that log thing is 1 over that thing of the inside. So in here, 1 over x cubed plus 4 secant of 3x times ln of 2. Right? And then that times the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of this is going to be, well, 3x squared plus, oh, seems like I may be running out of room. Let's see if I can make this fit by shifting this a little bit. All right. Hopefully that's enough space. Um, all right. <clears throat> so I was saying here, we were taking the derivative of the inside of this. So 3x squared plus um, the derivative of 4 secant of 3x. Well, the derivative of secant is secant tangent. So I have 4 secant of 3x times tangent of 3x and then times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of 3x is just 3. All right. So, so I mean, as far as you're writing this, it's not going to make it that much prettier if I do rewrite it. So, um, so I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it as that. All right. But, but in here, uh, again, keep in mind that we were we were applying the chain rule whenever possible, and the chain rule applied always. All right. <clears throat> All right, so that that concludes 3.4. Wasn't that fun? If you think I made a mistake somewhere, you're probably right. Tell me all about it in the comments. If you feel you learned something from me in this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, but more importantly, share it. Share this video with your classmates. And remember, you don't have to like math in order to be good at it. But you do have to be good at it. I am Jose Orozco. Goodbye.